kings in uh, European history. So you see that they're, they're tied back to royalty. In fact, uh, John F. Kennedy's sister married into British royalty. So these are just not uh, commoners that grew up in a log cabin. But there's, there's something that I would point out to our listeners out there in television land, and that is, is that the movers and shakers do not become rich and powerful and then join the Illuminati. They become, they become rich and powerful because they are part of these Illuminati bloodlines. And their councils decide how they're going to divide up such things as the drug trade, um, monopolies, and things like this. And so when you see these families like the Astor family go from being totally poor and in a few years uh, John Jacob Astor is the richest man in North America. And Grant, uh, maybe I'll, I'll use his, him as, as an example Okay. since I got started talking on him. John Jacob Astor came from Germany from a small town, Waldorf. Uh, his his background was being a butcher. He couldn't hardly speak any English. His English was broken. And he was the type of person that if you were sitting beside him eating, he might grab your shirt and wipe his, his dirty face on it while he was eating the meal. He was gross. He was crude. Um, he's not somebody that you would enjoy being around. Yet this man who could barely speak English and who is an exceptionally obnoxious person, within a few years became the most richest man in America. Now, how did that happen? There had been fur trade uh, for uh, hundreds of years, but all of a sudden he comes to America and monopolizes the entire fur trade, basically, on North America. Now, how did he gain control? It's because somebody in the Illuminati councils had decided the Astor bloodline, which is a bloodline that goes back to antiquity, the, the name is a derivative of, of Astarte, they had decided that the Astor family, you know, would be given that uh, privilege. Um, why did Bill Clinton become president? Somebody made the decision many years ago. A lot of you can, you can, uh, look back at the things Bill popped off and said as he was a kid. He said, I'm going to be president. <laughs> okay, Fritz. Well, we talked a little bit about the Kennedys, and I noticed that another Illuminati family that you mentioned in your Bloodline book is the Onassis' family. Now, as far back as I can remember, just out of recent memory, the only Onassis I could ever think of was Aristotle Onassis. And really, the only reason I bring them up is because we talked about the Kennedys, and they seem to be linked a little bit. Could you briefly uh, uh, describe how the Onassis fit into this picture? Onassis was, again, someone like John Jacob Astor, uh, he, his family lived, Aristotle's father Socrates um, lived in Turkey and uh, at the end of World War One, the Turks committed genocide against the Greeks and uh, the Americans had a warship off of the coast and very strange thing happened. I mean you have millions of Greeks being killed, but for some reason <laughs> this American warship sends a party of Marines ashore and the one person they rescue is some obscure boy <laughs> named Onassis. This is very, and the reason they give is, is because he had sold a bottle of liquor to the captain of the ship and the captain of the ship had taken a liking to him. Well, that's a nice story. So then on Onassis comes to uh, South America. He lands in South America penniless okay. in Argentina. But in within, uh, supposedly by washing dishes, within a few years, he's a multimillionaire, one of the richest people in the world. From being a dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. Some jobs like being a dishwasher. Um, you know, you can see this kind of stuff in Back to the Future with Biff, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
And this is what we're talking about. So what I'm getting at is, is he became rich because he was in one of these bloodlines. How extensive is that bloodline? And who else is part of that bloodline? I don't know the uh, full extent of that bloodline. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, in working with people that were in the or that I brought out of the Illuminati, most of the people of these bloodlines do not have surnames that match the bloodline that they belong to. Their only major connection, so to speak, is when they are uh, put before the Grand Dame. Um, and she is to give her approval as to whether they're accepted into the Illumi Illuminati or not when they're like age three and they're given a physical inspection just like the Masons don't want anybody who's got physical defects mm -hmm. and they're, they're given an overall inspection and in that initiation ceremony they will announce what bloodline they belong to but then they will continue going through life with a plethora of other names. Okay. Well, Fritz, <clears throat> after hearing you speak over the weekend, uh, I think one of the best examples to help people kind of understand how the Illuminati control world events, uh, could you kind of briefly describe some of the major events of the Illuminati controlled World War II? Oh, of World War II. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll focus on that. I might just um, mention to our audience, I, I could go back and essentially every war that there is, I could go through and show how these families have created them, manipulated them. Well, you can look at the Wall, you can look at Wall Street and the Illuminati families in, on Wall Street were the ones that financed Hitler to come to power. Also, you'll see that the Krupp family in Germany, plus a few other leading industrial Illuminati giants. Now, you're uh, talking about the Krupps that make the coffee machines. Is that right? Yeah, I'm talking about the Krupps that make a lot more than coffee machines. Um, I don't know how many thousands of factories they have today, but uh, they were the ones that built the tanks and a lot of other um, and the locomotives and a lot of the other um, uh, uh, steel works that the Germans needed for their war machinery. And these people were the ones, well, one of them said, we've hired Hitler. So <laughs> they viewed Hitler as their hireling. Um, so American and German and, uh, and British Illuminati um, financiers brought Hitler to power. So you had that aspect happening. And then the dialectics that was created that created the issues and how the war came about were also uh, Illuminati family manipulations. And then the United States' entry into the war let me point out something here. Um, we haven't mentioned Freemasonry, but Freemasonry is the continuation of the mystery religions. Okay. And Freemasonry and the Illuminati are like a glove in a hand. Well, well hold and on just a second, Fritz. I, I mean, I know some okay. Freemasons. I even work with one, and I mean, sure. he seems to be the most down-to-earth guy I've ever known. Sure. And, and as a matter of fact, if I even get to talking to politics too much about him, <laughs> I feel kind of sort of that I yeah. even know a little bit more what's going on than him. How, right. how is he controlling the world? Oh, he's just a member of a lodge system. We're talking um, the lodge system it needs a lot of good men at the base to support its structure. And uh, two-thirds of the Freemasons don't go beyond the third degree. They're that financial base supporting this pyramid structure. But uh, at the top, we have uh, these people. For instance, the Sinclair family, which is part of the 13th Illuminati family, they were given, if you'll look in um, Masonic uh, Encyclopedia, you'll, you'll see that they're listed as having been given a headship over the Freemasons, and that was something that was to be passed from generation to generation.
So the, you'll, you'll see that uh, these bloodlines uh, are, are, are in control of Freemasonry just like so many other things. Uh, the royal family of Britain has been at the top of Freemasonry in the United Kingdom. Um, so it's, it's not that every Freemason is uh, in the Illuminati, it's that this is just one more uh, system or a lodge or secret society that's controlled by them and and uh, Freemasonry just happens to be has been in the past it's it's no longer